Welcome to the Healing Stream Reflection. The title for today's post is Prayer and the World. I'm reading from Acts chapter 17 verse 6. Beloved in Christ, great men and women have influenced this world through prayer. And so Acts chapter 17 verse 6 testify to this statement. It says, And when they found them, they drew near Jason and set him burden unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Beloved, John Knox prayed, and the results caused Queen Mary to say that she feared the prayers of John Knox more than she feared all the armies of Scotland. John Knox spent much time in prayer and the church in Scotland burst into new life. John Wesley prayed and revival came to England sparring that nation the horrors of the French Revolution. John Wesley prayed long and often and the Methodist movement was born. Jonathan Edward prayed and revival spread through the American colonies. Martin Luther prayed earnestly and the Reformation exploded across Europe. History has been, has been changed time after time because of prayer. History could be changed again if people went to hear, if people went to their needs in believing prayer. Even when the times are bleak and the world scorns God, He still works through the prayers of His people. I agree. He unbounds when he said God shapes the world by prayer. The more praying there is in the world, the better the world will be. The mightier the forces against evil. The prayers of God, saints, are the capital stock of heaven by which God carries on his great work upon earth. God conditions the very life and prosperity of his cause on prayer. Why was prayer so important to these spiritual giants of the past? Because they knew they were up against almost overwhelming forces of spiritual opposition. They also knew the urgency of the gospel message and that prayer was an essential weapon in advancing the gospel to the ends of the earth. God desires that we Christians be concerned and burdened for a lost world. If we pray according to scripture, an era of peace may come to the world and wickedness may be turned back. From one end of the Bible to the other, there is a record of those whose prayers were answered, men and women who turned the tide of history by prayer, who frequently prayed and God answered. Elijah prayed and God sent fire from heaven to consume the offering on the altar he had built in the presence of God's enemies. Elijah prayed and the psalm 
of the Shunammite woman uh, was raised from the dead. Hannah prayed and God gave her a son, Samuel, who will bless God's people for decades. Paul prayed and dozens of churches were born in Asia Minor and Europe. Peter prayed and Dorcas was raised to life to have added years of service for Jesus Christ. Their prayers were the natural overflow of their inner faith. Their prayers were part of a greater whole godly lives laid for God's glory. As the 17th century theologian John Owen said, he who prays as he ought will endeavor to live as he prayed. There is the need to surround ourselves with a divine atmosphere of prayer in the spirit and create God's presence within and without us on a 24-hour basis. Almost everyone takes, talks about prayer and it's important but the people who actually praise are few. Again, almost everyone can talk about prayer and they are talking about prayer and the importance of prayer but the few who actually praise but the people who actually praise are few the number of active church members and even church leaders who pray according to the God given rules and guidance for prayer is seen is even smaller why is, is this so the major reason for the low levels of prayer in the lives of many Christians and consequently in the church of Jesus Christ could be spiritual blindness and spiritual insensitivity of many believers to the importance and commitment to the discipline of creating the climate of prayer around them. Such an atmosphere is a divine necessity for the, for the activation of God's power and purposes to be in oppression in order for his hand to move and his kingdom to be expanded. The Bible says in James chapter 5 verse 16 the effective favor and prayer of, the right, of a righteous man avails much. Prayers that avail much result from a spiritual discipline of faith rooted in God's word. Such a discipline will constantly keep the spiritual fire of God burning within and without a child of God for continual fellowship with the Lord, guidance and protection from God, and the Lord's daily use of the person for his highest purpose. The effective, fervent, righteous prayer is the divine atmosphere that maintains the anointing of God's spirit and power in the Christian life. I have come to believe that God designed prayer as a preventive measure for the welfare of mankind more than a curative means for the needs of man. We all rejoice in the miraculous healings of the sick, marvelous provision of daily needs and divine intervention to save us from death and destruction in several circumstances. The prayers offered in all these situations that deal with the problems of humankind are also opportunities for us to exercise our spiritual muscles, grow spiritually, and develop godliness. We must, however, admit that many of our cries and prayers to God for solution to our problems could be avoided if we feared God live in obedience and loyalty to our Redeemer, avoided evil, and put more trust in the Lord. If we faithfully spend more time in fervent prayer when conditions were pleasant to us, we will create a climate of prayer around us as a spiritual fire of protection and a burning source of love and zeal for worship and service. Also, if we allow the discipline of daily prevailing prayer 
to become our lifestyle, we will prevent many of the spiritual and physical diseases and several common human problems from plaguing us. We will, in that case, spend more of our times of lamentation and desperate cries to God for his intervention to rather offer prayers of worship, prayers of praises, and thanksgiving to God and seek God's face for more of his guidance and grace. In my opinion, prayers that avail much in the life of the believer is one of the major reasons why God told us to pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. In order to soak ourselves in the power provided by God through prayer. Jesus himself emphasized that man always ought to pray. And not lose heart. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Prayer, which is often referred to as the breath of the soul, should be as frequent in our lives as the rate at which we breathe. Said prayer should result from your own personal prayers because it has originate. It has to originate from God's spirit, God's word, and God's power within your heart and spirit. The prayers of others for you are needed to provide cover from God for you and cause the Lord to move on your behalf from time to time as an answer to the prayers of faithful saints. The prayers of others, however, only provide what you ought what only promote what you ought to do yourself again the prayers of other people however only promote what you ought to do yourself if we are ever going to experience prayers that are very much then we must love to pray pray beloved we have to make prayer and God's word the water medium in which we swim to a prey, the soil in which they or we grow to bear fruit, and the source of energy and nourishment that we eat and drink to survive. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I pray that the Almighty God, the King of Kings, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, will release His mighty blessings to Thee, O God. Lord, at this time, we declare and decree Your Majesty to overshadow every soul, spirit, and body that has been attacked by the evil one in the name of Jesus Christ we pray for your protection and your guidance to be upon your children in the mighty name of Jesus we pray the oh God that your divine unction will come from heaven and function upon your people because the Bible says that oh yes king of kings and Lord of Lord, power and mind belongs to you. We celebrate you as a God who answers prayer. And we know that, Lord, you have answered our prayer. We present our bodies as living sacrifice unto you for your reasonable service and worship. So we worship and adore you. Receive all your glory that is due unto your holy a majestic name from everlasting to everlasting have we prayed amen beloved god bless you for listening hope to see you again bye for now